Well, hello, hello, hello. I'm, of course, John Doe right here in Tokyo, Japan. And we're going to do another edition of the Ghost Letters Report. Now, if you're not aware by now, for the first time in two years here in Japan, we've had a nuclear power facility experience a restart. This is the, and this is the second time this has happened since the Fukushima nuclear disaster. The first time this happened was, of course, the Oi nuclear power plant, which restarted about two years ago. And now we are Kyushu Electric Power Company. We're in the southern region of Japan. They started the Sendai nuclear power facility up and running uh, today at this filming on a Tuesday in the morning. So I actually did it. They cranked it up. They said initial restart was successful. And they dropped all the rods down. Water started boiling. No problem so far. On highlight so far. Now, they're saying that the, the Sendai nuclear power plant is basically fits the new safety standards put out by the reformed nuclear power regulatory agency here in Japan which includes in, uh, providing more vents relocation of certain facilities things like that it's minor things that they think will make things safe a nuclear power plant but as we all know there's no such thing as a safe nuclear power plant all nuclear power plants will, are always at high risk to have a nuclear meltdown with that said, the biggest reason all these regional power companies say they need to restart nuclear power, and also the Abe government keeps saying this, is that we have no choice. We, ha we don't have the ability to produce enough electricity in this country. We can't do it. We need nuclear. We must have it. But here's something interesting I'd like to add. We recently had a heat wave here in Japan. A quite hot, hot summer to say the least. Only one of the regional power utility companies experienced what we call um, tight supply. Which means they're over 95% capacity. That was a Chibu electric power company. Even Kyushu Power Company itself did not even reach 90% capacity, which is when they talk about you're reaching the warning point of being your maximum. They're even close to reaching that. So these power companies were easily able to provide more than enough electricity. Even during a heat wave, when you see a lot more electricity used, because in Japan, people are highly dependent and really like uh, air conditioning. In these real hot summer months, a lot of the retail shops, a lot of companies, a lot of residential housing crank up their air conditioning, which in greatly increases power consumption. And only one of these power companies had a problem of even reaching their maximum capacity. So why? Why are they so big on restarting these nuclear power plants? Well, the biggest reason, of course, is the profit motive. They want a cheap way to produce electricity. And a lot of these power companies are deeply invested in nuclear. They have an asset, a highly dangerous asset, a highly inefficient way to produce electricity, by the way. Nuclear power is not a very efficient way. You know, it's one hell of a way to boil water to turn a turbine. And as we've seen time and time again, not only Fukushima in Japan, but many other times, there's so many documented cases of leaks and problems and radiation and things like that. You know. And on top of it, you have a growing solar power industry here in Japan. A small but growing thermal power industry. That's, um, there's been several large solar power projects started in Japan, which will be in completion probably for next year or two. And a couple of them are already completed up and producing energy. Ironically enough, 
It's the Abe administration that's been obstructing actual green energy. Because nuclear is not green. The amount of waste, dangerous waste it produces negates it from being green energy. You know, but Abe, one of the things he did was quite quiet. Wasn't on a fanfare about it. It was where he um, did away with this government policy of requiring regional power utilities to buy a certain percentage, like 10% or something, of their um, overall power output from solar producing facilities. Because all these solar production facilities are not connected to these regional power companies. They're not investing in it. It's other, and other industrial companies. They will be producing the solar power, but they need a buyer. Well, this policy not only said that you had to have at least a certain percentage you had to buy, but you buy at a fixed under market rate to guarantee that this industry builds and this type of um, green energy, which is far safer and better than nuclear, has a chance to develop and overtake the nuclear power. He did away with that and said, no, you guys ain't got about jack from these solar power producers if you don't want to. You know, which due to capitalism effectively means they got to put up a lot of capital to keep themselves afloat while they try to turn a profit and try to make a deal with these regional utility companies. And I'm sure these regional utility companies want that energy produced by solar power at the cheapest goddamn rate to continue to make solar power not viable economically. You see how that shit goes. So I do want to point out a couple of things that are going on here. So when these companies say that <coughs> we must have nuclear power, it's a necessity. We have no choice. It's not true. They're completely okay without it. And they have a much better, more efficient energy source growing to replace nuclear. It's all about the profit motive. Nuclear is cheap, quick, saves them a lot of money, makes them a lot more profit. That's what they want to go for, because they're greedy capitalists. <clears throat> so I want to hear what you think of this video and the things I presented here. If you like it, please give it a thumbs up, share it around. First time you see me, subscribe. You get lots of videos like this. That's all the cool stuff from time to time. So until next time, this is me, John Dolan, Tokyo. Check it out.